Hello, hello, and welcome to another update video about NetGas. NetGas, the previous update basically remains pretty much applicable. Um, the one I made yesterday. Um, please be aware that so far the price actually has avoided to form a lower low below the December lows. Okay, so technically speaking, it is still possible that the overall low was indeed here. Okay at the December lows as we explored it before. But obviously this is um, because of the strong retracement, this has reduced significantly in likelihood. It's just still something that we should keep in mind, still something that's technically valid, okay? So even though I've taken that scenario off the charts, it is still something we need to keep in mind. So we've never had invalidation of the bullish directly bullish scenario. But that, that only means that if we now see a rally above resistance, which is still at $2.31, I might count that as a third wave rally. Okay, wave one to the upside, wave two to the downside. It would be the bullish alternative. So to make it clear, it would only be an alternative, but I cannot rule out that this would be a one, this would be a two. And it would rally like that. This is what sometimes NetGas likes to do. It likes to do very deep pullbacks and then surprise. That's why they call it the widow, the widow maker. Yeah, um, it, it's just something that um, is worth keeping in mind. But you know, um, at the moment, it, it's just we have to align ourselves with probabilities, and this is at the moment not the most probable one. You know, at least not as long as we stay below resistance, and the resistance area is defined on the chart. So the primary scenario, which is the count on the chart, is currently my working scenario. And as I already shared with you yesterday, we had a wave four top that formed here on the 9th of January. Then a fifth wave down is unfolding right now. And it's likely an impulse, okay? So the way I see this is we've had a one and a two. So basically a one, two setup. Wave two topped here on Friday, the 12th of January. The third wave is basically still unfolding. We should then see a fourth and a fifth wave. Um, that third wave there is definitely already long enough. I mean, literally, I'd like to see another low in wave three. Um, but I cannot rule out that all of this wave three is already done. Um, let's explore that. Maybe I need to shift the resistance area, okay? Or we add another one. So let me just explore that with you here because the initial one two setup can give us targets for a third wave. Now, typically, what am I watching for, for a third wave? For a third wave, I'm normally minimally looking for, absolutely minimally, the 1.236 extension. That's at 230. Now, that really is the absolute bare minimum. Normally we want to go at least to the 1.38 extension. That's in this case 226. Now we're below that. Then the next level is typically the 1.618 extension, also broken, and the 200% extension, $2.11. That is where it temporarily stopped. So from a Fibonacci extension point of view, okay, this could already be all of wave three. I'm talking about this larger degree third wave, yeah? Um, let me actually add, you know, we, we'll just shift the wave degrees so we make the actual text a little larger because I think it's quite small. Problem is you can't really change the size of these labels on TradingView, which is always annoying for everybody who's using the, you know, a phone, but I'll give my best to read the prices. Um, but yeah, it is technically possible that here the larger third wave is already over. Why is that important? Well, you know, in the scenario as I've got it labeled, and to be honest, this looks like a bearish flag here right now. So we could be working on that smaller degree fourth wave right now. Um, but it's important for downside um, targets and how many more lows we get. So this count suggests two more lows and that it basically finishes the current 4-5 pattern and then there's another 4-5. And that will then be a major low. At least it has, an, has another chance to reverse and you know get back to sustainable uptrends. Um, and it is it will impact which resistance area is now relevant. I think we should be prepared for both. 
Because sometimes when you do the counting, Fibonacci levels can be more important. And when you do the counting, sometimes um, the downside move, especially with, like when you have a gap, it might it might hide what I mean. There's not you know it could be that there is a small three four hidden here, right? So therefore, on the smallest time frames, we have to be a bit more flexible. And therefore, yeah, I'd like to add an additional resistance area. So resistance is all the way up to two dollars and thirty six now. Only a sustained break above that level would suggest that a low is already in or something more bullish is going on. And then downside targets, however, still uh, relevant, as I mentioned before here, $1.98, $1.92, $1.81 are the next levels to watch. I think we can be even more precise once we have um, this way for complete, then I can give you the more precise downside target for one more low or two more lows. But for now, Nothing has changed. In fact, actually, it's just been moving sideways and this looks like a small bear flag. Now, there's not enough price data to really suggest what exactly it is, but indeed, it could be a pennant, you know, um, certainly a break below yesterday's lows here at around about $2.11 could uh, lead to a breakdown and direct continuation lower. I wouldn't be surprised if we get a little bit of a rally into resistance, though, but the resistance area is defined. And that's the space we need to give it in any corrective rally. That's my update about NetGas. Hope you liked the update. If you did, please hit the like button, leave a comment and subscribe. And if you're interested in daily updates about the S&P 500, as well as regular updates about stocks, check out our S&P 500 and stock service. You'll find the link in the description. Thanks a lot for watching. Bye-bye.